the blood self everything here yeah, it's me that come clean everything that that day and uh, uh, that day is not a thing to remember self my mother was the one helping me she has been the one taking care of those my children <laughs> The 24th of May 2021 was supposed to be a normal day for Gladys and Laya, but she was gone down in a crossfire between security operatives and members of the independent people of Biafra in Nigeria's southeast state of Imo. So the time the, the non-government, the army people came, came around here, so they were shooting gun, shooting gun. Uh, that they shoot the gun. So my mother, this thing in the street. So my mother is here cooking. She no even know what is happening. So the army people now use their gun, fire bullets anyhow. So that bullet now come and touch my mother. Here, she now fell and was shouting, shouting for help. And before they could find Mutu, go hospital, she now she now died. Mrs. Elia is one of at least 210 people documented by the Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project to have been killed in 2021 in the protracted violence with the separatist group in Southeast Nigeria. Members of IPOB are seeking an independent state for the Igbo ethnic group from Nigeria. Now tagged a terrorist organization, the group formed the Eastern Security Network a paramilitary organization to protect local farmers from migrant cattle herders seeking to graze their farmlands. The unit has attacked and been attacked by security forces. The arrest and extradition of the IPOB leader Namdi Kanu from Kenya to Nigeria made the group declare a sit-at-home order in the region every Monday and on days when Kanu appears in court. This was to protest Kanu's detention and compel the Nigerian government to release him. This was in the crisis in the zone as security personnel, the separatist group, and residents have been victims of a war that seems to have no end. Recent data from the Council of Foreign Relations, Nigerian Security Tracker, stated that at least 287 people have died between January to May 24 in 2022. Among them are 50 people from Imo State, which has the second highest number of deaths from the conflict. While Gladys died from insecurity, Ifoma 11, Harini withheld to protect her identity and also an orphan, considers herself lucky to have survived it, even though she has an ongoing battle for justice. She's one of the girls who have suffered sexual abuse due to the sit at home order imposed on residents in the state. Daddy, he, he gave her money to buy cat for him. So I bought the cat. He said I should bring it inside. When I brought it inside, he dragged me inside his, his room and locked the door. He, 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 he lied on me. Well, did he continue after that time? Yes, after that time. He still sent me to go and buy him bread. He lied on me. He lied on me? Yes. Wait on Saturday. That should be on Saturday. Everybody in the night, we were sleeping. So, I saw something, like a girl that was nursing right from small. She was with me right from five years. I was the one that nursed her up to this age now. I was checking something on the bed, killing mosquitoes, because mosquito was too much that night. She was not wearing pants. I saw something coming out from her vagina. I said, ah. It was white tissue color. I said, ah, what is this? I was surprised. That was when she told me that brother, Papa. I say which papa? Is the papa in the compound? Lots of jobs on the part of these men and young boys. They become idol at home and their minds become the devil's workshop. Most of these girls are now survivors of rape and defilement. Gladys' daughter and Ifoma's guardians still seek justice for the harm caused to their loved ones. Outrage from civil society groups forced the state government to respond to the death of Mrs. Elia, as Chioma Uzojima, the wife of the state governor, invited the deceased daughter Ogoma to the government house to sympathize with her. 
Who I go from? I did not do anything for. Yeah. I went okay. there. Okay, the wife did she call you? She called me. I went there. Oh. She promised me that uh, she will help me uh, after the birth of my mother. But since then, even I, the other time I go to government house, they did not allow me. Uh, and they post me on Facebook. I don't even know now. Somebody can say, say they saw me on Facebook. I say ah. Facebook while with the wife of the government I say congratulations. Congratulations for what? I never say anything. See me as I suffer. See me even after the bed, I called them. I tried to reach the bed, nothing. Premier Tice contacted the Chief Press Secretary of Imo State Governor, Wachuku Ogwike, to follow up on the promise made by the First Lady. He directed the reporter to the Commissioner for Women Affairs and Vulnerable Groups, Nkechi Ugu, who refused to respond to calls and messages from the reporter. In the former's case, government officials from the police officers to the police lawyer to court registrar and court officials at the Directorate of Public Prosecution in the state requested bribes to continue the prosecution. I said, you see why information is power? I know the case now. I've already prepared it though. It's just money for me. Okay, so what are we talking about now? Okay, I'll get the court and the date is coming out. So I will now go there and strike it out and file it at the high court. Let me send you 15. While women and girls like Mrs. Elia and Ifoma are affected by the crisis, adequate responses to rescue them from troubled situations face significant challenges. Earlier to the sit-at-home order and the security, we used to have meetings with these women at any time we fix it. But then with the insecurity and the sit-at-home order, Monday sit-at-home order and the trial days of Mazin Namde Kailo, where everybody is asked to sit at home, you'll find out that uh, meetings scheduled for those days are shifted. And that is even on non-sit at home days, the women find it reluctant to come out out of fear of the unknown. The divisional police station of Mogoma was burnt down uh, some two to three months ago. We partnered with the police, we paid advocacy police uh, visits to the DPO of that police uh, headquarters, and we still partner with the uh, gender unit. But then after that, that place was burnt down. The DPO was forced to leave that station. The Nigerian government said members of the outlawed group have attacked at least 164 police facilities across several states. While GBV support systems are dwindling due to the secessionist crisis, Alliance daughter Ugoma and Ifoma plead for financial support justice and normalcy to be restored in a troubled state.